So it's asking, what is the energy of a photon? Who's, uh, okay, it's uh, giving me a um, momentum. I guess it's a kind of a callback to special relativity that we've covered. So in special relativity, we had this uh, en mass, um, energy, mass, momentum relationship. The total energy of something squared is equal to, there's a portion of the energy that you can attribute to its rest energy. And there's a portion of its energy that can be attributed to its non-zero momentum. And the really wonderful thing about this relationship is that it's valid even when m is equal to zero, like for photon. So, uh, so with all that, what this reduces for photon is that photon energy uh, e squared is equal to pc squared, so take square root. So photon energy is related to photon momentum by this relationship. It's uh, um, it's really simple, strikingly different from the energy momentum relationship for non-relativistic uh, massive particles. So for photon. If you know its momentum, like the value here, then you know its energy. The energy of the photon is the momentum times C. Oh, so I guess I just take this number, multiply it by C, and these all being basic SI units, I'll just uh, trust that the unit will work out. Uh, if you're not sure, you can always you know, plug in the unit yourself and make sure that they work out. So the momentum of the photon is 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 24 in the basic SI unit of momentum. Uh, multiply that by speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of, oops, 3 times 10 to the power of um, 8. It's equal to, um, okay, there are many zeros there. I'm going to be giving the mantissa portion of the answer with the power of 10 being 10 to the minus 15. So let me multiply this by 10 to the power of 15 um, to cancel out the 10 to the power of minus 15, 1.65. Yeah. yeah, that's the answer. Um, yeah, and when we use the electron volt unit, you will often see momentum specified as electron volts per C. Um, kind of anticipating this. So in the question, they are basically giving me the, hmm, I guess there are different ways to approach these questions. Um, you could do it the long way. <laughs> so the long way would be this. So you use the energy momentum relationship. I guess the question um, uh, technically gives you the energy of the photon. So from having been given the energy of the photon, you can relate it to its momentum. And having related it to the momentum of the photon, you can use the de Broglie relationship then momentum of anything is given by Planck's constant divided by lambda. And solve this for wavelength, which is the Planck's constant divided by momentum. And you can do it there, but I think it's actually unnecessarily long, particularly given that um, the de Broglie relationship itself was inspired by the <laughs> photon's relationship. So we already have this energy of the photon is going just straight from energy is related to its frequency by Planck's constant times frequency. And we can just relate this frequency to wavelength for, through the regular uh, wave speed frequency wavelength relationship. Speed of light is its uh, frequency times wavelength. So frequency is the speed of light divided by wavelength. So I can just plug this in here to get um, the energy of the photon is Planck's constant times speed of light divided by the wavelength. And just solve this for wavelength directly. So the wavelength of a photon of some given energy is going to be Planck's constant times C divided by its energy. So, so yeah, let me just plug in those 
numbers into Wolfram Alpha, uh, mainly so that Wolfram Alpha can look up a Planck's constant for me instead of me doing all the hard work of looking up those numbers. So I have Planck's constant times the speed of light. Okay, and what I'm dividing by is now the photon energy. 10, uh, I hope it understands KEB. If not, I'll spell it out for Wolfram Alpha. Yeah, kilo electron volts, that's good. And the answers are, so this is in meters. It gives me, ah, there's the answer in nanometers, 0 0.124. The gamma ray photon, uh, so it's going to go from 10 ki kilo electron volts to 1.1 mega electron volts. And I hope it just uh, gets that. Yeah, and uh, ah, 10 to the minus 12 meters, okay, 1.13. It's uh, uh, really short, and I guess, um, don't know if uh, with the X rays and gamma rays, you know, I think you can measure wavelength of X ray actually directly. Um, this is covered in a section we kind of skipped mostly when we were doing optics called the Brock scattering. Um, I think your, yeah, your textbook covers it in X ray diffraction um, using the spacing in the between atoms in a crystal lattice. Uh, so you can look at it one or the other way, either you know the X-ray wavelength and you are measuring the spacing between the lat uh, atoms in the lattice, or you know the spacing between the atoms in the lattice and you are measuring the wavelength of the X-ray. So the wavelength of X-ray photons can actually be measured directly. Um, the, the gamma ray, I think this is getting to the level where I, I think we measure its energy, not wavelength directly. Okay, question 14, it asks, find the momentum and energy of um, 0 0.8 angstrom photon. And I'm actually going to make uh, use of the fact that it's uh, specifying the momentum and energy in these units. So for photons, we have this relationship that comes from the the ener relativistic energy mass momentum relationship for massless particles, its total energy is equal to momentum times C. And you can see how if you just find the energy and divide by C, that's taken care of it here. So whatever numerical value I have here, it'll be the identical numerical value here. So I'm just gonna find the energy of the 0 0.8 angstrom photon and just put in the same numbers in both the uh, uh, planks. So we can relate the uh, uh, photon energy to other quantities using the, the quantum mechanical assumption about energy of things, quantized energy of things. It's a Planck's constant times the frequency uh, for this question, we are given not the frequency of the photon, but its wavelength. So I need to use the wave speed, frequency, wavelength relationship to rewrite this in terms of the wavelength. You know, frequency is wave speed divided by wavelength. So this is going to be Planck's constant times speed of light divided by wavelength. Um, so I'll plug in these numbers in Wolfram Alpha and get the answer for energy of the photon. So uh, in Wolfram Alpha, I have um, so Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by uh, the wavelength. So uh, let me spell out angstrom. I, I do know what an angstrom is, you know, 10 to the minus 10 meters. But um, one of the <laughs> nice thing about Wolfram Alpha is that it's a unit aware. So if you simply spell out angstroms, it'll understand what you mean by that. You know, 0 0.8 times 10 to the minus 10 meter. And it'll give you the energy of the photon in a bunch of units, one of which is in kilo electron volts. Okay, 15.5 kilo electron volts of energy. And from my previous um, discussion, the in this unit, the numerical value of the momentum is identical. So, yeah. 